Our next intern is Sivan. Why don't you come up here? Now we have one problem, not with Sivan. Uh, the, in the person he interviewed was Herta Zauberman, uh, who called up this morning. Unfortunately, she can't make it. She's sick. But Sivan, I'd like you to tell us a little bit about her, okay? And I may interrupt and ask you some questions, okay? Morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Fluke for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of uh, my uh, Holocaust survivor, Herta Zaberman. Um, I learned uh, I learned a lot through her, and it definitely made me a changed person uh, after uh, interviewing her. I had before. Uh, before the semester, I was in Israel on birthright, and I had uh, gone to Yad Vashem in Israel. And it, um, and at first, and at first, like before, before uh, going, before even going to Israel, I, I didn't think you know we'd go to Yad Vashem, a place like Yad Vashem, and it would have such a big effect on my life. But, but then when I had gone. Uh, I was shell shocked from really getting the gist of what the Holocaust really was and what the uh, actual outcome became for for those for those who um, for those who didn't make it through and for those who ha still have traumatic um, memories from what had happened throughout each of their lives. I was very taken back and. I, I was, um, I was very um, honored to, when the semester came, I was brought up uh, by my computer science professor, who's also part of the Hillel Club, um, by the name of um, um, Professor Zahavi, Ruvain Zahavi, and he told me to come and do this internship. And right away from then on in, uh, I emailed Dr. Flug, and. I wanted to do this internship. So let's speak about Herta Zauberman. At the time, at the time of uh, when this all happened, uh, she, was, she was 20 years old, um, 19, I believe 19, 1940. She was born on, uh, actually not 19, yeah, she was born on April. Uh, she was born in April 1934, in West Poland. Um, she lived in a very comfy lifestyle. Uh, her family gave her everything that she wanted, and not just her family, but all, almost all, everybody in Western Poland. Not just her, but uh, not just the Jews. But everybody lived the com comfy and wealthy lifestyle as if nothing had ever happened before to them. They thought they were living in a, you know, great happy times. She had three members of her family. It was her mother, uh, her mother by the name of Julia Munk, and Father Isidore Munk. And they, the reason why she had lived a very comfortable lifestyle is because her parents were very uh, wealthy businessmen, businesswoman, businessmen, and at the time, uh, and also at the time, uh, her her uncle and her and her cousin uh, had lived with them. Uh, had lived with them because of um, they they were part of a big part of the family, and. She described uh, her family as very beautiful. She showed me a picture of her cousin who had um, stayed in with them. And um, they'd always played. I thought she was very cute. <laughs> and I would She's old enough to be a great grandmother. You know? <laughs> yes, yes. She was a very cute, she was a very cute girl. And I, um, uh, and uh, I was really like, I was really pleased to see it. 
Stephen, I want to ask you one question, just one question. You've heard her story, and you're telling us about this wonderful life she led. When did it all fall apart? What, what was your reaction when she told you this wonderful life coming from a well-to-do family? When did it all fall apart? It all fell apart um, when um, they didn't even know what Nazis were back in Western Poland. So they had stormed the town in Western Poland, right next to Germany. So the, the, the Nazis had came um, the day of the war, when the war started, I believe uh, 1939. Yes. And as soon as they, they, they saw, just saw these soldiers and they were shell-shocked, they were shell-shocked to see like that these uh, soldiers were coming. They didn't even know. They were big and tall. They were defenseless. And she had lived in her apartment with her, with her family and they stormed in. And they did, um, they did everything, uh, the, they did everything that the Nazis told them to. And what are you going to remember about her? Uh, that she told me to never forget, everybody, to never forget um, this tragic uh, event because it may happen again, whether to Jews, to others, to uh, other groups. And it really, ha really made a big effect on my life and how I see things now. Thank and you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now I, want, I, I want you to stay here for a minute. Now, he's the second intern. You're going to notice something very unusual about our interns because I said to you, this internship changes them. I was standing out in the doorway before as the interns came in, and I had to say, yeah, this is one of our interns. Is that an intern? No jeans, no sneakers, no T-shirt, no hats on backwards. This has really changed them. Take a look and take a look at the other end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.